Hello and welcome back to another episode of the CrossFit Howard podcast. It is episode 75 and today we have Alps. Alps, thanks for joining us, mate. Thanks for having me. First question as always, why, what brought you to CrossFit Harrow? Um, so I got introduced to CrossFit Harrow from um, another member, um, purely because we moved into the area. Okay. And um, was just looking for something to do. Previous to that, I, I used to do like hit training in a park. Uh, so I wanted something that was similar to that. So yeah, that's, we, we got introduced, came that to the yeah. first session, died. So it's about about what three years now. Three years. Yeah, yeah three years. Yeah. Um, and you you moved from we were up north. Kensal Green. Oh right. Yeah, okay. Green. Fine. Yeah. So from Kensal Green down to here. Fine. Okay. And that was your first experience of CrossFit. Yeah. To, yeah. I, I, to be honest, I've heard of CrossFit when you're at kind of school and you're doing CrossFit, as in CrossFit games, but it's nothing like this. Yeah. Yeah. As in, yeah. As in like CrossFit. multifunctional yeah. fitness, just different yeah. games, different sorts of. Yeah fitness tests etc um okay and uh fitness always has, has it always been a big part of your life no <laughs> fair enough as, at least you know we, we're open and honest yeah. in this so um uh growing up okay. um, <laughs> so i i i uh, as a as a young child so probably probably before seven to eight prior to that i was quite a normal kind of healthy not overweight or anything and I don't know from about the age of eight just started piling on weight um, and it was quite quite a lot quite actually a lot of weight up until I think when I went to university and I just that's when I started to kind of get involved in fitness and stuff. so from the age of eight to 17 probably was yeah. where you gained gained a lot of weight quite a lot yeah. okay I mean I, but I remember you talking to me about this it, it's weird like when you're like the age of 16, but you wear bigger waist trousers than your dad, it's quite embarrassing. So for me, um, and the thing is, I didn't used to eat a lot, or I, I was like everybody else, like ate similar food to other people, but I just don't think I ever found a sport that I really liked or I enjoyed doing. Okay, so were you involved in sports? So it might not have been like gym as such around that age, but were you involved in sports? To be honest, not really. Not really? I just, um, yeah, no, yeah, not really, no. And okay. I and I think part is that yeah, part of the reason as to why. Probably what? Yeah, because I, I was outgoing. I used to go out and about. I wasn't like stuck in front of a television or anything. I didn't used to play computer games all day long. But I just think I did didn't get into sport or anything like that up until a later age. Okay. Yeah, some people like sports a massive part of their life from the youth. Yeah. Some people don't find it until like they're 30, 40, you know? And I think like for me growing up, I went to a school that was really, um, there was a big sports element to the school, but it was always football or rugby. Um, and there were, like we did weightlifting now and then as part of a rotational program. Um, every term you might do weightlifting as one of your classes or stuff. And but it didn't, gymnastics. didn't cater for everyone. No, not really. And the things that I enjoyed was like gymnastics and stuff, but we didn't do that. It wasn't like this, you know, you played football once a week, you played rugby once a week, but you had to wait a whole term before you get to do gymnastics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's actually quite, even for me being at school, that was pretty, pretty similar. Yeah. Um, it kind of got, I mean, you'd be very fortunate if the, uh, if your teacher had an interest in a particular sport, let's say it was gymnastics, where they used to, I can't remember what the, uh, they used to call it the apparatus, is yeah. it the gymnastics apparatus they used to climb and everything else, then you'd be fortunate enough to use it more. But if you had, which head of PE might have been football, rugby, whatever, you'd have probably played that a lot more. Yeah. And I think also like when you're a bit overweight at that age, you just shy away from doing things that yeah. you know you can do. Yeah, yeah. And um, you I just shy imagine. away from doing it because you just feel everyone's watching you and stuff. So. I think that's always been a part of me as well, even till now. Really? Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, we, we talked about it previously about, um, I used to go to the gym, but I never used any of the free weights because I was always quite embarrassed of people watching me. And also you've just got people with like, you know, really built, lifting really heavy weights and there you trying your first attempt on your lightest barbell. Can be quite an intimidating environment. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Which is, uh, 
which, which is mad because it, I think no matter what, what someone's experience is in with fitness, it can always be intimidating that for the first few times that you go. Um, women, well, the women I've you know spoke to on the podcast, they have said pretty much similar things that they also find that quite an intimidating, intimidating um, transition. Yeah. Let's say. Um, so eight to seventeen. You know, experienced that that weight gain. Seventeen at uni, decided or we'll go into or yeah, seventeen, eighteen. College, uni. Yeah, decided that sport was now going to become it important. It was sport day. It was just just um, training, gym wise. Training, eating cleaner. Um, yeah, just really just sorting sorting myself out as I would say. So I start running. I joined the gym. Um, what uni did you go to? Uni Brunel. Brunel. Which is it's which a is sports a, yeah 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 well, yeah yeah. So, yeah yeah. So that helped. <laughs> Um, so from that perspective, it was really good. Um, just, yeah. And I just think, you know, I think there's, as when you're at that environment and stuff, there's lots of pressure and stuff. So even just look good and look after yourself and everybody's doing it. So I think yeah. it just, you just felt natural. Yeah, it could also be, you look at it as it being easier to do those things because everyone's in that same frame of mind. Yeah. Like, so it'd almost be odd if you didn't. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, you kind of stand out because oh, you don't take part in the sport, regardless of anyone's ability. Yeah. But I would imagine that the sports teams are, would have a lot of different levels. You know, the first team, reserve, whatever sport it w- would be. I actually didn't join any of the sports teams. teams it's, just, yeah. it's more about just no, yeah, it's, but it's yeah. in general, yeah, yeah. you someone would be almost like an outcast because yeah. they weren't involved in any exactly. part of the sports. Yeah. Um, and and uh, what, what did you uh, study at uni? <laughs> Business information systems. Business information <laughs> systems at a sport university, pretty much. But well, engineering university. Okay, engi- it is oh, fine. An engi- it okay. Is an engineering. What what made you choose? I what what made you choose that? And then what made you choose that at Brunel? So, um, I hate studying. I hate school. I hate university. The studying elements of it. For me, I always knew that I wanted to go into consulting. Okay. Um, I don't know why. And I was like. I want to get a degree, I want to get into a grad scheme. I know there's five brands I want to kind of work for, and what's the easiest path for me to get to that? And I was just like... Uh, uni would be that. Yeah, uni would be that. This is the degree that will get me into it. Um, and it worked out, but it's weird because I did my A-levels and stuff in design. In design? Yeah. So, well, I suppose that gave you kind of a bit of creative, like that was yeah. a creative side. So consulting in what? What, what is it? So specific? I did, um, I started off by working with HP and IBM. Okay. So doing um, tech consulting, but I didn't used to do the technical side of things. It's more when you're making big technical changes, people and businesses have to adapt to that. So I worked on how do you get them to adapt to that? So the people side of change type of activities. Which is quite hard. It's the hardest part of yeah. change. Like change. You, can put, you can put a system in, but if nobody uses it, it's failed, right? Yeah, yeah, so of course, of course. And then growing up, did, uh, were, you, were you brought up in a strict Asian household? What? Um, not necessarily, no. no. So food was... Food... Um, there was no pressure on education? Like, I mean, edu- there would have been an element of it. Educate. it was really easy for me. Uh, my brother did everything wrong, so it wasn't hard to get anything right, if you know Fine, what I mean. Fine, okay, yeah. Um, and he, he does his own thing and he's doing really well out of it. But he wasn't academic at all. Um, I don't think I'm that particularly academic. I just know how to pass exams, if, if I'm fair. Um, I don't have any interest in... I like really researching and reading things and like plugging knowledge into my head. Retaining that information. And that's all. But I, I, I can do that really well. So I can pass the exam really well. Whether I would use that and apply that, probably not. Um, so, in, as a household, no, um, it wasn't really strict. Um, it was an Asian household, like... Um, there's always going to be an element of pressure, right, on education? I suppose a little bit, yeah. Like, there's all... I think if it's not from your own household, it's from extended uh, uh, family, yeah, yeah. how their kids are doing so well, etc. But, um, you know, I went to state schools. I, I, didn't, I went to a good university, but not the top ten. And it worked out for me, so... Yeah. Yeah. So you got that degree yeah. at uni, and then what was you worked went with, with IBM for a little while. No, so while I was at uni, I took a year out and worked with IBM. Okay. And then um, I got uh, put onto the. I, I applied for HP, being a direct competitor, and I got into their grad scheme. 
and um, it was the first time they reopened their grad scheme after like five years. They had some issues. Oh, right. So they reopened it. So there's only like 20 of us that got through. And um, oh, it was the best two years of my life. It really? Like being, at, being at a fresher at uni, but with loads of money, a company car and a credit card. So what? And, and literally living out of a suitcase, going is that from what, project to project. So that's is that what it involved? Yeah. So would you go around all of London, like the UK, or would you go abroad? It, it was a Every, yeah. Everywhere. Do you remember kind of like the job role as such as in what you would do day to day? Um, no. Like you do, you do, but it, it changes. Yeah, every, each yeah. project's different. When you go in as a consultant, your role isn't the same on every single project. So you quickly adapt and learn. So, so you'd get a company say, we've got an issue with X. Yeah. Um, what can we do so that we can complete Y and Z? And then the company then goes and bids for it. There's like 10 other companies that bid for it. And then if yours gets selected, you put a project team together. Your project team could be from different parts of your company and they come together and they get deployed onto the project. Now, it'd be great if it's close to home. If it's not, you're all in hotels and you're working on site for five, four to five days a week. And, then back and that could week. be for months or years. Yeah. So one of my projects lasted a year. <laughs> Wow, and you were traveling? I traveled daily, but it was quite far. But I chose to travel daily. But it was in the middle of a field, working in a port cabin. Right. Because it was a government site, so it was just like, yeah. A government site in the middle of a field in a port cabin? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, don't know, I don't know whether I should ask what you were trying to organize. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't nothing secret or anything like that. So, um, so you continued with that? I did it for two and a half years, but I got tired of um, living. So as much as it's shiny and great on the outside when yeah. somebody looks at it, and yeah, you've got all of that energy when you first finish university yourself, but you soon realize how much it drains you. Like, so Regardless of how much money they pay you. Yeah, so after two years, I just like, I, I didn't get to see my family. You don't get to see friends. Um, the only, the only thing that then becomes a driver is money and it wasn't my driver. So then I decided to look for something else. So yeah, I moved on. I went for an in-house role after, so working for Visa for, I did that for a good six and a half years. Wow, that, that's a long time to be within a yeah, company. Yeah, and I, that was amazing because back then I was still, I moved to living with mum and dad still. So it was like a, uh, a 30 minute walk down the Grand Union Canal okay. to work in Paddington and honestly the best decision I made hands down well, going I, to work for Visa yeah I mean as a company it was great but also I felt like I grew up as a person in that company which found out roughly what I wanted to do in my career and then yeah so I thought it was a really really good, good yeah because six years is a long time to to be in, in a company and st like even you know, I, I don't know what the average, I think, is it like two, three years that people stay? I, I think like probably is it less? about 10 years ago, it was probably about six to seven years was average. And now it's less. Now it's less. Yeah, yeah. it has I to mean, be less. literally, um, it's all about how do you retain your talent? It's constantly about how do you retain them? Because yeah. there's someone knocking on your door, that's going to take them if you don't look after them. But also doing the same job, trying to find for you personally, what challenges you within that job. So if you're, if you're taking on the same projects all the time, or similar projects. I know that each project is different, but it can be like, you know, you wanting more from that company. Yeah. And with Visa was good because I started off in a role, then I moved into another role and I had opportunities to do that. But then yeah, that not all came to an end that point in time. Did you decide that you wanted to? So the company was, um, long story short, I don't, I don't want to go into technicalities, but Visa didn't used to be a part of the global Visa business when I joined. Then they sold it back to the global Visa business. Right. From Europe so we did a big restructuring and he had the opportunity to either take voluntary redundancy or um, sign new contracts or, and or, 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 or apply for another role internally I decided that you've done your time I've done my time the team amazing team I work with we're all moving on to different things so I decided to set up my own kind of limited company and start being an independent consultant and um, and again, that was that was like the trigger point for you, right? It was different. It was crazy. Like I was just like, oh shit! Like I have to actually start looking for work, you know, from one project to another project. I have to know how to like balance my books and 
what rates I charge, all this kind of stuff that like- It would have been done for pretty much, yeah. yeah. You don't do any of that. So um, it was scary, the first contract and stuff like, but you, you start to get used to it. You start to become more comfortable. And actually, um, again, uh, an amazing, um, I did that for about six years. It was amazing, like being my own boss. Um, just, just before I, I left Visa, I met Asha. Sorry, I met Asha quite long before that. We got married um, just before I left Visa. Then I, you know, moved. Uh, then we kind of um, started to. Uh, we got married, um, and then we started to explore kind of travel and things like that. Yeah, so that's one of the things I want to talk about. Contracting or consulting allowed us to do that because I basically chose when I wanted to work. I got to pick the projects I worked on. I didn't have to pick the project in Bristol or in Scotland. I could pick it all in London because it's my choice. Yeah. And then, and could, could you do your things uh, over, online too? Was it, or yeah. were you completely set to be like, well, it's a fixed location. If I'm choosing London, I've got to be there. Or could you do it online? As in, the, I think when I first started, um, so working from home's always been a part of, since I've been working, we worked from home. So I've never had this issue where there was this five days a week in the office. Cause consulting, you generally do that. You're in different locations. Um, we the types of contracts or projects I picked up usually you decide where you need to work okay but most of the time you get the best out of being in the office because I for me to deliver my work I have to be with the customer yeah so yeah from that perspective uh, and uh, you touched on it a little bit but how did you find that transition from going to um, employed everything kind of looked at, as long as you're performing within your job everything's looked after to then right I'm starting a limit company. I've got a tender for the work. I've got to do X, Y, and Z. Like, because it can't. It's quite for well. For, in my experience, it's been. It was quite. I knew that it was a jump I wanted to make, but it's quite scary at times. Do you know what was exciting? It was, so, it was so scary, but so exciting. And what the easiest thing was about it was, it wasn't that hard to look for work and projects because um, through my time at because I'm quite a sociable person, I kept a contact and networks with lots yeah. of different people. So when they know that you've moved into that space, you automatically, word of mouth goes around. Yeah. And before you know it, you're just on a project with someone you used to work with. And generally people want to help. They, they want yeah. to f give you an opportunity or you know, they want to work with you and it's on different terms, you know? It is, but um, as a consultant, you're only as good as your last project. Yeah. So you, know, you still have to be on your A game, continually delivering, because at the end of the day, your work is what speaks for it's your reference it, isn't that it is yeah. your reference because you don't there is nothing else it's you and your work that's it yeah so with with when when working on your own um did you sub what did you put a small team together were you using or is no, it just you it's just me but you end up on projects so imagine it's the same thing as working as say when i was at hp but the only difference is is the business is decided not to get a full-on consultancy or someone to come and do it they're doing it themselves but they need specialist resources to come in fine and that's where we kick in okay got you so you tend to start to realize that you move with the same people from projects to projects because once that project finishes somebody else might get onto another project and they'll bring like, hey i know these people we need these skills so we'll bring them on board so so it's a uh, interesting yeah yeah thing. everyone would look after each other in that yeah, in that sense yeah. um you mentioned traveling um you said after after you guys got married so had you traveled before yeah i did travel before um like i traveled a lot before uh, a lot of them were lads holidays <laughs> <laughs> but um did a lot of traveling before that i did like um kenya uganda uh, tanzania um I, I climbed kilimanjaro oh, wow. did loads of like different things so that's another thing as a fat kid i probably wouldn't have been able to climb kili what, but, what made you do that um, just a few of our friends decided that we wanted to do it. We did raise some money for charity. So just thought something. And, and, and how did you physically deal with that? Like, did you find that really, really hard? So, how, how, how tall is it? Do you know? Do you remember? Uh, it's 5,000. I should know it. It's 5,200 something meters above. Okay, well, I mean, it's I the don't. highest point in Africa. Okay. Um, uh, so four of us did it and um, we all did training. You can't really train for um, altitude because... Um, until you're in it, you don't know you, yeah, how you're gonna it. respond. 
I took up hot yoga. Really weird. Like, well, no, it makes sense. Uh, it does, but it's a really out of my comfort zone. Like, it was weird. Like, normally. Did you wear your leotard like, and everything? It, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> but so I took that up, and um, because apparently it's the same feeling of your lungs being under pressure up against them. So when you're in the heat, it's a similar sort of feeling. I don't know if it was the hot yoga or not, but two of us only made it to the top and that was me and one of the others. The other two had to come back down oh, uh, really? when they got to the second highest point of the mountain. And had the other person done hot yoga too? No. So I don't know if it, no, he didn't. He didn't do it, but he was hallucinating at the top. So I wasn't hallucinating. So, <laughs> so it's definitely not yoga. <laughs> so yeah, so we did that. But after, after when Ash and I got married, we did, we decided, so we had a choice. We could move, we could do the traditional thing where you, quickly buy a house, do it up, move in, set life up and start a family, all that kind of stuff. But we decided to sacrifice our independent slum walk and stayed with my mum and dad in their house and travelled for five years. Wow. Um, we had suitcases packed. They're always there. The wizard stuff in there. And we just find out if, some, if we're doing anything on the weekend. And I remember we used to go into Skyscanner and do London to anywhere or everywhere, I think, anywhere, wherever, yeah. whichever it comes up. And just press search. Press search, and then whatever comes up as the cheapest flight. But, but yeah, also, reasonable, yeah. Also, reasonable timing, so we make the most out of it. We booked it and we flew out. We just parked the car at the airport and go. And we did loads of stuff around Europe or short haul trips. Like it's that. like Friday to Sunday. So, yeah, or yeah. even take a day off for of work and stuff. And then we did, always did about two or three um, mid-haul trips a year. And then around September, October time, we always did one big um, holiday, like three or four destinations where we go out to the Far East or South America or something like that. So it, it's just, it, it's an, I mean, if, if I could give advice to anybody, it would be like, if you can do it, do it. It's amazing, like the experience we had. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. So. And and what would you say is your, um, or what was your favorite, or what is your favorite place? Um, I'd probably say um, Myanmar, Burma. No idea where that is. So Burma, it's just on top of, um, just near Thailand, India, okay. Bangladesh, but it's, it's, as a country, it didn't allow tourists in for a long time. So, um, and when we went, it was like the second or third year they were like allowing tourists in because they had like political unrest and stuff in the country. But it, 10 out of 10, hands down, like yeah. from culture to food, it's so untouched. You know, that point of where before it becomes the next like Cambodia or Vietnam or something. It, it's, it's very, it was like, very authentic. Just so authentic and so friendly. How long were you there for? We went for two and a bit weeks. We literally went- Was that the plan to stay there too? Yeah. Okay. We went from the top to the bottom and just did loads of things in between. That was so, so, you, so how did you come across it? You just p looked at places on the map and thought, yeah, we'll try so that. I have a bucket list in my life. Okay. And one of my bucket list items was to do a hot air balloon ride over, I think there's a thousand, there's a, like 5,000, I don't know how many temples there are, but, um, it, and, and that's done in um, Myanmar. Oh, so fine. I always telling Ash that I really want to go, I really want to go, I really want to go. And when we'd done our honeymoon, the plan was to go at that time, but it was rainy season, so the hot air balloons wouldn't have worked. And we'd only been able to do a couple of days. So we postponed it and then about four years later we decided to do it and it was just so you took a hot air balloon yeah so we did we did the two weeks there but we did one of the highlights was the hot air balloon yeah wow what yes. is that what does it feel like that like, it must be unreal I, i've never amazing. done one you, you wake up like it's it's crazy because you wake up in the morning it's pitch black and um you get some coffee i remember getting into this basket and then does it literally feel like a basket it does feel like a basket it feels like you know when you're going on a picnic <laughs> yeah. and you take your picnic and you're the sandwich in the yeah. basket so that's what it feels like um but then literally there's that bit where the balloon goes up but the sun hasn't st has started hasn't started to rise 
and then you see that little bit of glow coming up and then you start to slowly 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 see the sun coming up and then all of a sudden you see all these tips of gold appearing because all the temples the pagodas are gold at the top most of them and all of a sudden you just like got wow. this it's, it's phenomenal amazing, amazing. What, what did you uh, fear most the going up part or the coming down neither so i have <laughs> so here's this, here's another so i don't mind I, I love heights over land right but i've got a fear of heights over water <laughs> okay you're more likely to survive if you land in water right yeah 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 but i think it's a fear of not knowing what's inside okay so i didn't i was fine with both oh really yeah i mean going up and going down because i could imagine that first kind of initial initial part where like the hot air balloons coming off the ground is a bit whoa and then it's not because it's 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 a massive basket yeah, right yeah so it doesn't right. feel like yeah i would imagine it'd be quite um quite i think big. The, the coming down's a bit weird because the, the balloon's coming down quite fast but you've got these guys that catch a rope and oh right and also there was a couple of balloons before us and we saw them landing and it wasn't that and bad it's, it, yeah it's he's and it settled the nerves yeah um, what, what other bits and pieces did you, did you get through um, traveling? Have you been like, uh, have you jumped out of a plane? Is that, one of, is that on your list? It's really weird because I lived in Dubai for a year. That's the place to do the skydive, right? Yeah. So I didn't do that because the type of, every time I tried to book it, it was like either it's too hot or believe it or not, it rained. So <laughs> um, that, but we did, um, I did Machu Picchu. Oh yeah. With Asha, me and Asha did um, South America together. Oh wow. That was amazing. That was like, as a couple, you <laughs> what was it living in? A that, tent? Is, it, is that not one of the seven wonders of the world? I think it comes under the ancient world. I don't know. I think it but, might be. Um, yeah, as a couple, you start to like because you're in a tent. The luxury's gone away. So yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting. You get to know each other very. Yeah, you do, you do. Yeah, a little bit too much. <laughs> but, yeah. So have you have you got trout? Because now obviously. Uh, traveling may slow down in the same respect right because yeah. of your newborn yeah yeah tell us a little bit more about about your newborn yeah so Mayan was born what three and a half months ago um, yeah changed our lives right um, that whole that actually this whole COVID period has changed our life we bought a house which would you have done like obviously that was in the plan that but, was always in the plan so but, even with the traveling we've been looking at houses okay um so that's that's that but i think we bought the house we've done it up asha fell pregnant so there's a lot going on at the same at time. one time yeah i got a new job and which we'll go on to born. soon yeah we'll go on to and then mine's born so um yeah he's amazing like you know if, if you said you had a job and being a dad was a job that's the best job, job of my life have. like honestly um for all the crying and stuff it's like it's worth it yeah yeah it's worth it that sounds amazing and and how have you obviously with with that bucket list are you wanting to i'm assuming that get get, get, get as he gets older him becoming a part of what's in that bucket list yeah so so um we have this say like ash and i have always said that a um, couple of things like Obviously, um, we don't want travel to stop. It's a massive part of our life, right? And it's not necessarily travel. It's more about culture and being able to explore different things and learn about different things. That's more what we like. We don't stay at lavish hotels. and We don't stay at big branded hotels. We try and stay at local boutiques, really feel for where we stay. Um, so you can imagine it's amazing experiences and really nice places we stay at but they're not your Hiltons and your Conrads and all that kind yeah, of yeah. stuff um, so we want mine to experience that that's what we want to bring him up that sort of environment is it's not about glitz and glamour it's about what the experiences and feelings because I guess although the glitz and glamour of it and all is is nice but it kind of it, it, it shadows over your like the, the, what you're trying to find in the culture and like you yeah. know it puts a big shadow on that because you it's not the real thing. It's not. It's not. And um, I can only say that because I've experienced it, right? So we stay at, we, we book four stars, five stars, all that kind of stuff. But we book for local. And the type of food you get, the service yeah. you get, you see things that nobody else would ever see. Um, so we, Costa Rica, when we went to Costa Rica, we stayed with this family. They own three bungalows. 
They have a really nice swimming pool, the facilities are great. But this guy, he was also our tour guide as well. So not only did we stay on their land, which is a farm and everything, it's great to swim with. He also takes us to places. And I remember we went to this place, it had about six to seven waterfalls. Wow. And it was only me and Asha and our guide there. And that's it. Wow. We were swimming around and stuff for hours and nobody else. And there's there. no way that you'd get that staying at Hilton. Exactly. Or, yeah. So Yeah, that that's amazing. Um how have you adapted to become a farmer? Um, have you found it, are there times that have been really, really tough for you? I, th I think so. Like, um, it's weird, like, when your child's crying, I think recently we've been, to, he's, recently I think he's going through a growth cycle or something, as they say, but he cry, he's not crying, but he doesn't sleep for long. And then when you do get him to sleep, he just does a whinge for about, 20 minutes but it's quite it's weird when it's your own child it's quite you find it quite hard because you're like what's wrong with you yeah i've beat i fed you we've changed your nappy your burp but you're still crying like what is it and it can get frustrating but honestly like literally they'll start crying and then two minutes later they'll lose a smile on their face and then you're like you forget about all of it, it all goes away um, lucky for both me and Asha, we both have ne like lots of nieces and nephews. So for us, it's not been that big in terms of um, adapting to children. But I think the only difference is, is that you can't give them away after. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's five o'clock now. Yeah. But yeah, um, to be honest, I think the the fact that we got to move into our house before he was born has made it easier. Made it easier. I, I mean. I spoke to you about it that I think during the um, during the lockdown we obviously moved in with my sister while our house was getting done up yeah and um, you can't go out anywhere you're not in your own space um, the box is closed um, it's quite mentally draining mm. and then you start a new job and it, it does it it's does. trying to be everywhere isn't it but and you're trying yeah you're trying to be superman for so many different things and you can't yeah and after like the first six months i was just like i just don't care like i'll go with the flow um, i think it's quite important to acknowledge that as well like trying to not necessarily it's not about pleasing everyone but trying to be everywhere or you know actively doing four or five different things and like the person maybe that suffers the most is the is you as the individual right yeah, yeah definitely but then you know, once we got the house done, we moved in. Um, I, I loved living with my sister and stuff. But I think having your own space, once you've had your own space, then you have to give up your own space. I yeah. It's quite hard. Yeah. So then moving back into the house, once it was all done. Must be so satisfying. It is, it is. And um, yeah, yeah, it was really good getting it done. Um, so there was, uh, well, I said I wanted to go back and talk to, to your job. Uh, your current job um, <laughs> it's a big name yeah. uh, definitely I mean not necessarily our, our age group but definitely a few years younger um, TikTok yeah um, what's it like uh, in that environment it's, it's crazy is it but in a good way so I feel old working with TikTok I could imagine well I, I suppose TikTok's very very popular for what 80 17 16 or even younger yeah to I think the early 20s yeah it is but it's growing right yeah like you've got what? a lot a bigger age range on it and diversification and stuff. Covid probably blew it up more it than did. it would maybe it have gone um to be honest um it's, it's it's this is weird I didn't even know what TikTok was <laughs> but you're <laughs> when I first applied for, not, not when I first applied so I saw this advert come up and it was for this company called Bike Dance and I'm like, bike oh, dance. Bike dance. Right. So I thought, all right, sounds interesting. Um, I applied for it. I applied for a few other companies as well. I applied for a contract. And is this all consultant? Is this consultant? Yeah. And I applied for a, a contractor role as well. So another contract to work on. And um, I got all three roles. <laughs> but bike dance basically owns TikTok. Right. 
So when I applied, I didn't know it was... I, I did somewhat know TikTok was associated with them. Well, yeah, I mean, that's probably a smart move from them because if they had it as advertisers, a role for TikTok, they would be inundated with but I think applications. Also, well, actually, no, because I think they'll probably have got more applications because people don't know bike dance. They're quite reserved. Well, I guess that in that works in their favour because then they get yeah. those who are serious about their career. Yeah. And not because a lot, you could imagine for those companies, a lot of people would just go and work there for the brand to say that, oh, I work for, for TikTok. Facebook, TikTok, whoever. Yeah. But honestly, um, it's different. It's just very different from the way we work, the people you interact with, the buzz that's there. And, it, and, it, and it's very fast moving. Like I've worked for companies when they say we're fast, but you, hurt, you I don't think you've experienced fast until you work for a company like- Like, like a big fast. social media yeah. company, yeah. Is there much com competition? Like do they, uh, I don't know, discuss it about other brands and other social media platforms? I, I think like with all of them, there's, there's um, competition in the market. Uh, you know, you have to remember that if, if TikTok releases something or this company releases something, then soon to be behind them will be someone else or they'll do an evolution of that. Yeah. So I think as a company, they always have to be on their A game. And I think all of them have to be on their A game. Um, so, you know, it's a, um, it's a very competitive and challenging kind of world. My understanding, I don't, I haven't got TikTok. Um, my understanding, we have got it at the gym, Subs uses it, um, but mm. I don't, I think my understanding of it is that uh, it is funny videos that are just yeah. uploaded. I think the, yeah, you can say funny, but it's not actually. No, yeah, it's, lot, or some educational, of, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of content on there. Yeah. Um, but I suppose the best thing to, you know, as a brand, I think it's like an entertainment platform. That's the right, yeah, yeah. right word, yeah. So yeah. it's it's not particularly social media, nor is it a television channel. It's almost like the modern day you've been framed. It's just, yeah, but not always about, about comedy. comedy. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, that's now that's how some people have actually made their their is. living. Like you got millionaires overnight, right? Yeah. Just by doing that. But I think the the thing that for me, like, um, honestly, working for them, I remember telling my nieces and nephews, I'm working for TikTok, and Asha will tell you all the time that um, I'm like a celebrity in their eyes, and I'm, I love it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, my uncle works for TikTok, and their friends come over. Yeah, this is him, this is him, <laughs> this is the one that works Are for you them. signing autographs? No, I'm not signing autographs, but they take all my freebies that I get. <laughs> But I think it's really nice to put a smile on people's face. And I think that's what I like, because whether you like it or not, it does make people smile. Yeah, as yeah, a yeah, yeah. As a, as a product or a feature. As a platform, or a, yeah. Or a platform. So I think that's quite nice um, to work for a company like that. How, um, how do you make a viral post? <laughs> it's a very straight, blunt question. It's but I'm sure there'll be people watching it that have scrolled through I mean you may not have the answer yeah. um, but what is it about these particular posts that just make them go viral like you're talking from like zero to like a million a million views a hundred thousand views it's really weird but you just have to do that one thing that on that day just happened to be yeah. quite funny quite different and someone picks it up and, and someone picks it up is it the use of hashtags? It's hashtags. There's lots of different, the algorithm works out in different ways, but you know. Timing's takes, important, isn't it? Of course, yeah. Yeah, the, when people release certain things. Um, but some of the, you know, some people over lockdown got really, let's say, not famous is not the right word, but they they got a big presence through um, instructing through cooking, um, yeah. through fitness, exactly. some are jokes. Yep. Um, so it literally can give anyone an opportunity. Absolutely, and that's that's really, that's such such a cool thing, right? You have a platform, and it's up to you to use your talent to somewhat exploit it and take make use of it to your advantage. Um, as long as you're doing good by the community, I think that's that's really important. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I think it's a really good um, thing. Some people love it, some people hate it. Um, as a company, I love working for them. Um, I'm not a big TikTok user myself. But you but don't I have do to definitely, be, yeah. Sorry, I'm not a creator, but I definitely am addicted at times when I'm 
before you know it, I just went on to look at one thing and I'm there for 45 minutes of just going through so much stuff. But that's become such a norm, isn't it, for a lot of people? Yeah. Like, you just sit there and just swipe. And some people don't even realise that they're doing it. Yeah. And you'd be on there for hours. Yeah, you can be. Yeah. Well, I suppose it's got everything on there, right? It's got everything on there. Yeah, You yeah. want your sense of humour, you find yeah. a bit of laugh, something. You, you've got all your favourite, like, if you... You know, you go, you type CrossFit into the search, yeah. you'll find so many CrossFit videos on there. Um, and if that's what you like, that's what you'll see. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. Um, okay, and then um, going back to uh, what, you know, travel and, and bucket list, what's, what's on there now that's something that you want to start doing? Like, what's in the pipeline? I think um, we've always wanted, so, uh, we've always wanted to travel to China, Japan, We've not been able to do any of that. That was a plan, a holiday that was planned for the lock before lockdown. Oh right, okay. So that's definitely on the bucket list. Um, that might take a while now, right? That could take five, ten years to do. Yeah, it could do. So yeah. that's always there, but we'll still do all of as much of Europe as we can. Um, obviously, we've been to places that we can take mine to that we know are somewhat child friendly. But I'm of the opinion that we'll just strap him on get one of those trap baby yeah, strap yeah. on things and we're gonna go like, well, I'm sure he would appreciate when he's older and he like you know stuff yeah. begins to understand it he would he would or even when he gets to 18 he would he would appreciate it so much that he was given those opportunities as a kid to yeah, see those places it's just like I just can't like, I don't know like everyone says to you your life will change when you have a kid and stuff it's only changes if you let it change right or you choose where you want it to go well I suppose you said quite an interesting thing before that with regards to like you guys had a decision to make do you go for the norm and get your place get married and just settle and then set life up or do you continue doing what you were doing before and that's exactly what you've done and that, that's that's yeah. that's what you've done and, and to be honest like out of our friends we're probably the last ones to have kids and, and we're okay with that so be it we've done a lot of things that we wanted to do yeah I mean there's always expectations that you've got to do it by a certain age you've got to do this like it shouldn't matter there shouldn't be I don't know where it's come from who created it um, but the, it's the same you know it translates to anything in yeah. fitness you're supposed to be a certain size a certain yeah. shape women, men relationship you're supposed to be married by a certain time house, kids none of that I think matters unless yeah. um, all that matters really is that you're still doing you're as happy as you were before exactly yeah yeah um, what um, so so uh, the the bucket list is going to be growing and it is uh, and I think like we we got the there's an app called Bean okay um, you can put in all of the countries or cities you've been to um, so we do this as a couple if I put my own countries in I'd have seen a lot more than Asha would have but <laughs> as a couple we put it in and we've seen according to the Bean app we've seen twenty four percent of the world oh wow so there's still a lot more to see. There's some countries I wouldn't go to. Yeah. Um, but some, like, we, it's just time, and with all the situation that's going on, that's that's the only yeah, thing that's holding yeah. us back. What What are your uh, What does the se next six months look like for you, goals wise, in terms of whether it be personal or, or fitness, or what do you want for the next so, six months? Um, obviously, personal. For us, it's around mine at the moment. So it will be, you know, kick him off to the best start we can give him. Um, travel as much as we can with him, be it short haul or not. Um, from a work perspective, is just carry on doing what I'm doing, um, like enjoying it. And when I stop enjoying it, I look for something else. Yeah. Um, and from a fitness perspective, um, for me, it's now kind of stepping up my game a little bit more on my weightlifting okay um, I think I want to kind of I feel really confident to push myself in terms of stacking on that extra 10 kg um, so what if it falls off at least you gave it a go um, so I think the, the focus probably for the next six months for me is focusing on that like I can I'm okay with the bars I'm okay with certain things but I think that's where I want to kind of put my focus on and Which, I, I think when I talked to you about that is that's the thing that I, I hated yeah doing. I was just about to say I that hated it. I was going to say which is amazing because yeah. years and years ago when you first started out yeah. in fitness and doing your thing that was something that you disliked wouldn't do but you, didn't you feel remember comfortable. when I first started right we empty bars and like I used to look around I, I remember I used to look around thinking oh 
god like they're just gonna laugh at me i've got an empty bar look at them they've got their um bars stacked up with weights, weights. and stuff but actually i know why it was empty now because when i if i did that at the gym right i bet you that i'd probably do it for two weeks and i'll be out for three weeks because i've done my back in or my knees have given way and stuff but i'm not lifting correctly yeah and at the gym there's nobody there to really correct you right you're, you're trying to learn it yourself whereas here i find like i'm able to get the correct postures i'm being corrected and i'm still being corrected right even to this yeah time, it's 100 percent correct yeah but it's nice that i have that and somebody's looking out for you to do it in the right way and they tell you to take the weight off if you're not in the right thing and you're not ready take it off um, so I think that is and, and it's good in that sense because by doing that it makes you like aware of yeah. your own ability you get to experiment but in a safe environment I think where you were saying before where you look at when it was you with an empty bar and you thought but you know but everyone's going through that same emotion because everyone starts at that point yeah, don't they? they do yeah and I think <laughs> I mean that's the thing as also somewhat reliving the childhood that I missed because <laughs> yeah. I couldn't climb a rope. I yeah, can yeah. climb a rope now, and yeah. I didn't care if I couldn't climb it when I was younger. I can climb it now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people probably can't climb it anymore, and yeah. they used to be able to when they were a kid. One hundred percent. That's so testament to you. There is stuff that I'm doing that I'm like so, like personally, super proud of. Like doing head. I'm not doing a full handstand. I'm doing a headstand. I can balance myself. Which is amazing, and, and <laughs> such a key thing that you said there was that you weren't able to as a youngster but you can do as an adult yeah. but what happens is people tend to do things as a youngster but then can't do an adult so you're all the, you're reliving that yeah. that that process and we forget we stop learning sometimes as adults we're like oh you know you've done it like you'd be surprised um people will laugh at me saying this but skipping as a child becomes so easy it's, it's just so easy yeah. you call, you've got the coordination but you don't do it for a little while and get into adulthood and if it's not something yeah. you you practice or as part of what you're training you forget how to do it and you can't yeah. coordinate yeah, 100% agree with that, but yeah. No, it, it's... Yeah, it, it, it's, it, I, think that, I think that's really, really um, something that I think um, keeps me coming back is because I'm learning and I'm doing things that I, is it somewhat trying to prove to myself that it didn't matter that you can't do it, you couldn't do it then, you can yeah, do it now. Yeah, possibly. I don't know. It might be psychologically I'm a bit scarred or a bit tapped <laughs> maybe, somewhere. But, maybe. But, um, but I find it quite addictive, if I'm honest. I feel like I, um, if, I, if I miss coming for like two or three days, I feel like I've missed something out. I don't know why. Yeah, it was. And I come back and I'm like, Lorenzo, you're, tor <laughs> you're torturous today. It's been torturous. But it's good, it, 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 it's that learning kind of open mindset to be like, oh, I want to improve, I want to get better, I want to try so, these things. You know, the interesting thing is that if you look at my patterns have been, I might have signed up to a gym for a year and stuff, but I got bored. Then I started the hip training, I got bored. And I've been here for almost three years and I'm not bored. Which is which good. Is, which is, and my... I think I just told you before, my attention span is so, so low. So I would get very bored very easily. Well, it's good to hear that. Yeah. So like I keep like that whole concept of um, being able to just come back and not get bored is quite cool as well. Yeah, no, that is good. Um, it is, um, Alps, we, we have run out of time no for today. Um, <laughs> sorry, um, guys and girls, thank you. And we'll join you again next week.